Hello, my name is Randy Norman. I'm an application specialist with Preco Industries. What I'd like to discuss today would be uh, gaskets. Typically when I walk into a gasket manufacturer, I see people running a press. They're running about 30 strokes a minute. I'll see one person on the end stripping out a part. Once the part is stripped out, then they use several people to pull out the slugs of the gasket to make it look something like this. Then they have several people count them, repackage them, and stack them. I always ask when I'm in a gasket manufacturer, why are you doing this by hand? And I'm always told that the reason they do it by hand is because they don't have time to automate the system. Uh, what I'd like to do is kind of step back and go over the automation and look at the different ideas of what time they're actually wasting when they use one person picking, several people pulling out the parts of the slugs, and also those same people or different people counting and stacking the parts. Typically this is a two cavity die, what I want to discuss. At 30 strokes a minute, if you had a standard 12,000 piece run to make numbers simple, that's 60 parts a minute. With several people packaging, pulling, counting all the parts, this would take your job, at 30 strokes a minute, it would take you approximately three hours and 20 minutes to get this job run, a 12,000 piece run. What I have behind me is a Preco 4 post 12, 20, 40 ton automated press system. Automatically running it in with the special tooling with feed through punches, knockout fixtures on the back and a stacking fixture, I'm running 75 strokes a minute. At 75 strokes a minute with one person, I can run the press, stack the parts and package them in an hour and 20 minutes. That gives you an additional two hours with anywhere from four to six less people to run the job, which you don't have time to do when you're running at 30 strokes per minute. Uh, what I'd like to do is tear the press apart and discuss some of the features that we have on the, the system and allow you uh, to look at the tooling, the knockout fixtures, and the way they're designed so this can be pulled apart and reset in approximately 15 minutes. One of the major problems when cutting gaskets is getting rid of the slugs. The slugs typically are too small to be used for a knockout table other than this large one here, but the tooling using feed through punches we can get rid of the slugs in the die area or in the tooling area. What I'd like to do is open the roll feed here and show you a special design tool. This tooling is designed on its own chase with parallels where the the slugs actually come up through the back side of the die. See that? We've minimized weight by reducing the die area or the backup plate steel as opposed to making it 18 inches by 12 inches. We reduce it to just the cutting area of where the tool is. Each one of these slugs are actually cut and picked up and removed inside the die area. Again, because of the design of the tool, we've designed the edges three-quarter thick so you can run feed-through punches, this type of die, in a Preco press, or by lowering the mic stop and using the same feed-through punches, you can run a standard die. This allows for quick and easy setup from your feed-through punches back to your standard cutouts with no punch holes. The advantage of this is twofold. Number one, you can get rid of your slugs in the die area. And number two, because of the way it's designed, your cutting area, you reduce the weight of your, your tool so any operator can pick this up. It weighs approximately 25 pounds. Again, using, we can slide the die in. And using the air clamps, lock it up in a matter. On the outbound side of the press, if you look at the material, you can see all the slug holes of the gasket have been removed. Again, those were removed by the die we just discussed inside the tooling. The larger slugs we can move and knock out with knockout fixtures on air cylinders. Typically, we use a quarter inch thick Lexan or polycarbonate. The reason we use this is because it is clear. You can actually see the substrate and see how the material reacts to the knockout. A lot of people use wood. The problem with wood is you can't see when the knockouts come down 
exactly what it does to the material or how the material reacts to the knockout. Using a clear substrate, you can see where there are hang-ups or if the part are flipping, or is flipping, excuse me. Once the larger slug is removed and into a scrap bin, as the part indexes forward, the part itself is knocked out onto a stacker, again using the air cylinders, and again knocking them through the knockout board and onto a, a fixture below. Another real important feature of the knockouts is your die maker can burn you an insert board. What we've done here is we have a large knockout table. The die, the die maker himself knows from the center of the tool in the area so many progressions out, he can laser cut you an insert or a board that can be taken out and removed depending on your part configuration. In this case, made out of three-quarter, same substrate that your dies are made of, seven-ply seven maple, and they can be inserted or taken out depending on what job you're running. In this instance, both these dies can be inserted in, or knockouts, I'm sorry, or pulled out if you're running another job. Again, the slug knockouts here, and your part knockout here. Again, both of these can be laser cut at the same time your die is, by your die maker. Again, that adds for quick changeover or quick, chimed, quick change time when you're running a different job. The final piece of the puzzle is the stacking fixture. I'll pull it out here. This unit here, made of plywood again, actually stacks your parts up. This is your count and finished parts. We're actually running a little over 50 parts or 100 parts every stack. Onto the fixture here, it's held on by two or four screws. Unscrew it, screw it back in. Any plate can be used the same, any fixturing can be changed around. Again, ease of change over by removing two or four screws here, depending on what you want to put in. You can pull the fixture off, put another fixture on. Finally, what you have are stack parts. All the slugs have been removed. You have one operator running a press, counting the parts, stacking the parts and packaging the parts, as opposed to the old school 30 strokes a minute, one press operator, several people deslugging it, several people counting and stacking and packaging the parts. Thank you.